All right. Um, welcome, everyone. We'll look at the fourth key to supernatural ministry today. We'll pray and get started. Uh, let me just uh, open out with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for the wisdom of your word. And Lord, we believe that you're building us up, Lord, line upon line, precept upon precept, and uh, helping us, Lord, strengthen our inner man. Uh, and God, uh, move, O oh God, in the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. Father, we ask for your grace. We ask for your strength. We ask for your favor, O oh God, and your blessing upon this time of discussion, Father God. Uh, prepare us, O oh God, to uh, be those witnesses that you've called us to be. We thank you. We worship and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so coming to the renewed mind, uh, we all know that God is so much greater than us, so much higher than us, and the way he thinks is different from the way we think. Uh, the Bible teaches us in Isaiah 55, uh, we must be familiar with that passage where it says, right, like, um, uh, your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. So God definitely has thoughts which are way higher than our thoughts. So here is the question. When we talk about the supernatural in our lives, uh, if we keep functioning with our level of thinking, we won't be able to move in God's supernatural. So that is why we must aim for God's way of thinking. And the Bible teaches us that there is something known as the renewed mind uh, or it's God's way of thinking that uh, each of us needs to develop, which will help us walk um, in victory, which will walk, help us walk in the power of God. When we study about the kind of mindset that a believer can have, there are three different mindsets that the Bible throws light on. First is for us to have something known as the natural mind. Okay, natural mind is the normal, logical, rational mind that every human being has. So the decisions that we make through the natural mind are limited to our five senses. We, when we don't have information beyond the five senses, we are not able to, um, you know, decide. So that is the natural mind. Is there anything wrong with the natural mind? No. There's nothing wrong with the natural mind because it is God who has given us that uh, ability to think uh, as uh, ordinary human beings. And the Bible talks about this natural mind. Okay, uh, But then, you know, there is also a reference to something known as the spiritual mind. Uh, let us read one passage uh, where there is a mention of both of these kinds of minds, natural mind as well as the spiritual mind. It is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 through 16. So if someone is there, you can please read the passage out aloud. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 16. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Mm -hmm. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Yes. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit in this one God, mm -hmm. that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches us, teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? For we have known the hearts. Okay. So there is a distinction here where uh, in verse 14 uh, we read about the natural man. And what does verse 14 say? Natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So it implies that the natural mind is limited. 
to the natural world. So what are some of these, um, it says things of the spirit of God. So the things of the spirit of God are the truth of God's word, the revelation of God's word. Um, and at times God calls us to do things which are beyond the natural realm. Um, you know, when we look at things like uh, miracles, when we look at things like supernatural divine healing, um, for the natural man, for the natural mind, it's very difficult to grasp. That's what Paul is telling here. He's saying that the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Because logically, there'll always be a question, how can this happen? You know, uh, think about the wedding of Cana, where uh, uh, people ran out of wine. Now, if Jesus were to propose this or share this idea with the people and say, okay, don't worry, uh, we will have more wine. Uh, miraculously, you just fill all the uh, pitchers, the jars with uh, water, it will turn into wine. If he were to share something like that, do you think people would have accepted it? The natural mind? Mind, what would the natural mind say if Jesus said, okay, bring water, we'll make wine out of it? Yeah, it's impossible. Jesus, it's impossible. Um, don't, you know, don't play with us. These are all the comments which people may have uh, presented because in the natural thinking, these miracles are not practical. They are not possible. Okay, so the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of God. Uh, but what does it say? These are spiritually discerned. Uh, so there is an aspect of spiritually discerning matters. Now, how do we spiritually discern things? We can only spiritually discern uh, when we are thinking on the basis of a renewed mind. So there is an option. Even for a believer, there is an option. See, normally, okay, uh, let's say, uh, I'm just putting a percentage to it, but that's not the accurate percentage. 60% of the day, we just live by our natural mind. Um, yeah, we just manage our life on the basis of natural mind, logic. Okay, this is the time that I have. This is the way I have my schedule. I'll do this, I'll do that. If uh, petrol is less, I'll put petrol. You know, you just think logically and you go about your day. But there is that other aspect where, you know, God may want us to expect his intervention. Now, if I function 100% with the natural mind, I cannot accommodate what God wants to do. Because for the natural mind, it's too big. Or in other words, the natural mind is very limited. We always question, right? I mean, there are so many questions in the Bible. We can look at the miracles and say, but how? Even Genesis, God created. He said, let there be light. Natural mind would be like, seriously? Is that how he created the world? I can't accept it, you know? But the spiritual mind can discern and it can receive the way in which God works. So for a believer, it's so important to, to strengthen the renewed mind. So we'll talk a little bit more about the renewed mind. But uh, there is a third category. Uh, anyone? What What is the third category of mind that the believer can function with? Natural mind, spiritual mind or renewed mind. Third one? Carnal mind. Correct. But uh, isn't that quite sad that a believer can there is an option to function in the carnal mind for a believer, okay? Uh, if we are not careful or if we are not submitted to God, then there is that risk of uh, functioning with the carnal mind. What does the Bible have to say about the carnal mind? So the Bible says that the carnal mind is uh, enmity with God. Okay, Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8. Let's look at that passage here. Okay, so I'll read it. Uh, it says, For those who live according to the flesh, 
set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is empty against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So what can we understand about the carnal mind? There are some, uh, um, you know, uh, pointers or hints over here. One is carnal mind is enmity against God. That means what the carnal mind wants is against what God wants. Uh, what does God want? God wants his name to be glorified. God wants uh, his kingdom to rule and reign. Um, then God wants us to, uh, we could say, uh, walk in the spirit, right? Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because uh, over here it says, those who are in the carnal mind, they, they will please themselves, right? Verse 8 says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So when we are in the flesh, what do we end up doing? It's all about self-seeking. It's all about, you know, our pleasures, our needs. Uh, and Galatians chapter 5 also talks about the, um, the fruit of the flesh. So we have an idea, bitterness, anger, all kinds of evil uh, is what is associated with the flesh. So when we say that a believer is walking with a carnal mind, these are the priorities in the carnal mind. Um, self, pride, jealousy, lust, anger. Um, so there, it, it's like fully opposite. Now, natural mind is valid. God has given all of us a natural mind. So we can uh, function with the natural mind as a believer. God doesn't say anything about that. There's nothing wrong. But a carnal mind is a no-no. When we are a believer and we have a carnal mind, that is something God does not want. Okay? Because it is opposite to what God desires from our lives. Uh, and then, of course, you know, comes the spiritual mind. Or the other word that we use is renewed mind. The familiar scripture is Romans 12. We all know that, right? Romans 12, verse 12. Uh, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? That uh, you may prove uh, that which is uh, the acceptable will of God. So, what is the renewed mind? What is the renewed mind? Anyone? Uh, would you like to describe it? A renewed mind? Uh, renewing mind is uh, where like, our, our thoughts are, uh -huh. um, our thoughts are completely changed. Okay. Transformed. Uh, so we is, uh, how we need money is that you think the way that God thinks. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a pure mindset. Yes, yes. So to have a, a thought process the way God thinks. Okay, and uh, what Rin said is correct. She said that to have a pure mind uh, because that's how God's wisdom is. You know, we read about it in James chapter 3 where God's wisdom or God's thinking, it's peaceable, it's righteous, right? Uh, so it, it will produce a good fruit. That is renewed mind. Now, why are we using the word renewed? You know, it's basically like a renovation of our minds where when we come to know Christ, we come with our background, we come with our you know, usual ways of thinking, um, usual patterns. We use the word patterns because sometimes they are patterns. It's not just easily you can't remove one thought because it usually has, um, uh, yeah, how, how do you put it? Uh, it's like a little more strong in our minds that you can't uproot it just with you know one thought sometimes you have to uproot several thoughts to get rid of that pattern uh, that we are experiencing but it's a process so we go through that renovation in our minds by removing carnal thoughts by removing uh, you know worldly thoughts selfish thoughts um unbiblical thoughts 
with what the Bible has to say regarding the same matter. Okay. Uh, so, for example, you know, if you take, for example, uh, success, we may come with the mindset once we are born again that oh, what is success? Success is being popular. Success is making a lot of money. You know, success is um, uh, making people follow you. So maybe we have that mindset. But what is a renewed mind? You have to look at success with God's definition. What is God's definition? You know, servant leadership, humility, being submitted to God and, you know, being a blessing to the people. So you see a contrast there, right? Um, so then it's just a simple example. In that one matter, we are seeing that there is a carnal way of thinking about that same issue, but there is a renewed way of thinking about the same issue which comes from God. Now, with regard to every subject in our hearts, we need to have renewed thinking. So it's a lot of uh, hard work. It's about journeying with God day by day. And, uh, you know, somewhere we ask the question when we are born again, uh, why aren't all believers, you know, perfect or nice? When we interact with believers, we come to know, oh, there are these perfect parts, but then there are these still, you know, unformed parts. Why is it so? See, we're all going through the process of being renewed you know? uh, and uh, that's the journey we have to make and as we make that journey eventually for various aspects our mind will be renewed the way we think about the matters will become the way god thinks about the matter okay and uh, we cannot underestimate <coughs> the power of thoughts this week pastor jay kumar uh, talked about thoughts no and he said how even one single thought, he had such, some good facts that he shared, uh, you know, the speed at which we think, the number of thoughts that we think. Um, but thoughts will determine our actions. Actions will determine our behavior and behavior will determine our yeah. lifestyle. So everything starts with one thought. Uh, even if you look at Adam and Eve, you will become like God. Oh, Okay, we'll become like God. One thought, it led to what? The fall and the whole thing. So we cannot afford to have even one thought in our minds, which is not the way it is in God's mind. So these are the uh, risks that we run. So we talked right now about three things. We said a natural mind, which is okay, which is good. We have to function in our natural mind. Carnal mind, we should definitely not function in it because it's against God. Third, renewed mind, which obviously we will develop over time. It's not something you, you know, you're born again and then you're fully renewed in your mind. It doesn't work like that. We have to make the journey. That's when we will be able to uh, see God working okay, in our lives. So now, coming to... Um, why are we talking about the renewed mind uh, in the supernatural, keys to the supernatural ministry? See, when it comes to the supernatural, if we are limited to the natural mind, we can't move in the supernatural. Okay? There are two instances given in our uh, notes here. One is the time when uh, in John 6, there was a need for food. So there were crowds uh, waiting and, uh, uh, you know, Jesus wanted to feed the hungry crowds, uh, but there was no food. Okay. Uh, what exactly happened in this particular incident? And the other incident which is shared in our notes is from Matthew chapter 14. Okay. When uh, Jesus tells Peter, come. And the Peter comes and walks on the water. Now in both of these incidents, we'll see the way uh, people are thinking. So let's first go to John 6 verses 1 through 13. Can someone read it like uh, quickly? Yes, John 6. <laughs> After these things, Jesus went over, over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. 
the brain motion to the power in the first place, saw the signs which he performed on those who were deceased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to them, Where shall we buy bread that feeds me eat? But, but this he said to test him, for he himself knew no one who would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have more. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad of here who has five body loaves and two small fish. A while of being among so many. Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in the number of five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he was rude to them, uh, them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they went. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, we see a miracle uh, happening over here. But look at the mindsets. There are two people. One is Philip. One is Andrew, okay, Simon Peter's brother. So what's happening now? There are the multitudes. How many people are there? Uh, the number is 5,000. Okay, 5,000 people. Now, um, uh, Mm, okay, fine. So now um, the question that Jesus asks Philip, he says, Philip, uh, where shall uh, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So he's asking Philip, Philip, tell me, where shall we buy bread? There are 4,000 people. So how many, at least how many loaves do we need? Logic, natural mind. Come on, let's do some calculation. 4,000. Okay. Fine. So 4,000. Let's. Wives. Okay. 8,000. Okay, fine. So if you say more than that. The thing is, man, women and men compared to men. More in number, right? Yeah. So, uh, on double, then, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, this is getting complicated. Uh, let's 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 just uh, assume. Okay, let's just assume some eat more, some eat less. So, ten thousand uh, loaves of bread we want. We are assuming each person will have one because they are very hungry. Okay. Okay. Now. Let's just um, 10,000. So if you say 10 rupees per uh, loaf of bread, how much money do you want? Yeah, yeah. One, lakh. one lakh rupees. So Jesus is asking, uh, firstly, that's the one. You need uh, money. Okay. Uh, secondly, he's saying, where shall we, which bakery shall we go to? They should have, right now, they should have, you know, uh, 20,000 loaves of, uh, or 10,000 loaves of bread. Practical issues. Philip, very logical. He's saying, Jesus, 200 uh, denarii worth of bread is not sufficient. Okay, whatever that denarii was worth in those days. Um, he's saying, that only is not enough. Now, what will we do? So he's thinking like us. We need at least one lakh rupees. Which bakery? Even if we swiggy, like, will it reach in one hand? You know, <laughs> thinking all those logical questions. Because the task is too big. Okay. How to solve this problem now? But you see, it's good, not bad. Logical thinking is being applied, natural mind is being applied. But you find Andrew, he is bringing to Jesus a boy with five loaves and two small fish. What is he thinking? What is Andrew thinking? I don't know. Because we can understand what Philip is thinking. He is working, functioning with a natural mind, logical mind. But 
Andrew, he is mostly functioning with the renewed mind. Now, we don't know whether he has seen Jesus earlier. <coughs> I mean, we don't have any recorded incident where, you know, um, um, personally, there was some multiplication of bread that Jesus did with the disciples or what, I don't know. But the amount that he knows Jesus, he knows that miracle is possible. Hey, Jesus is here. Don't worry. Okay. Definitely something is possible. If Jesus is telling us we have to do this, there must be a solution to this problem. That's why in the first place he's proposing that we must feed these people. So Andrew has a renewed mind. The possibility of the supernatural, Andrew is able to uh, envision that. So it's just for us a contrast of two people who are functioning with two kinds of minds. Natural mind, which is not wrong at all. But what is the problem with the natural mind? Very limited. We get stuck. Especially when it comes to uh, God's work. Because if we know anything about God, from time to time, his assignments are impossible. Okay, You're like, how God, how to do this? I don't know how to do this. But it's only when we walk by faith that we can do it. I mean, think about Moses, come on, part the Red Sea, lead thousands of people, Joshua, you know, cross the Jordan, bring down the walls, uh, you know, uh, overcome the enemies. Uh, more, so many people, everyone you take up, you know, Elijah, uh, Elisha, um, John the Baptist, Jesus, Paul, Peter. There were so many incidents in the lives of God's people that when you see the things that took place, it's supernatural. There's no logical explanation that we can provide from the natural. But how did they manage to walk in the supernatural by faith? With the help of the renewed mind, which told them there is a possibility. We're dealing with God here. He can do the impossible. right? So that possibility uh, of Believing for the supernatural will only come from the renewed mind. And that's why we need to develop that renewed mind. So Andrew was thinking uh, with a renewed mind. He knew, you know what? The solution for this problem of whatever, you know, 10,000 loaves of breads we need right now, it is a miracle. And Jesus will give us that miracle. So let's take the little. I'm sure he can... Pray, bless, give thanks to God, break it, and it will multiply. And look at the miracle that took place. Uh, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets, 12 extra baskets. Um, I'm smiling because just yesterday uh, I saw the answer sheet of one of the children's church kids. And this question was asked. Uh, what did uh, this, this, this statement gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost? Jesus said. So what do you think uh, happened with the remaining uh, bread? So the child had written, Jesus asked them to pack it for snacks. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you see, there was abundance. There was not just a miracle, but extra. Okay, and I was just amazed how the child is thinking. Oh, okay, maybe they pack more for snacks. Uh, but with God, you see, unless we come with that childlike heart, we'll, we'll become limited. We can't walk with God. Think about uh, Peter now. Okay, Peter walking on the water. So now we need to go to Matthew. Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Yeah. Again, one more person. Could you read this passage quickly? In Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse 20. Mm. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went upon a mountain side by himself to pray. When evening came, come, came, he was there alone. But the boat was already considerable distance from the land, 
by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. If he just rose, they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called me. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Mm, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think we can... Uh stop here we can see how again there's an impossibility where uh, jesus is already walking on the water and um, you know the disciples see him and then jesus says but immediately jesus spoke to whom to peter who did he speak to everyone, everyone. yeah he spoke to everyone he spoke to them saying be of good cheer uh, it is I, do not be afraid. Uh, maybe once Jesus spoke like that, they came to know, oh yeah, this is Jesus. We are familiar. This voice is Jesus' voice. But it was only one person among the disciples who had that possibility thinking, you know, renewed thinking. Immediately he said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Okay, unbelievable how can how can anybody even ask that question think there are other disciples nobody asked jesus that question but peter is saying so that shows that he is functioning out of a renewed mind because he is thinking of the supernatural i can walk on water lord if it is you um, you know command me to come to you on the water uh, and thank god jesus is very gracious and he says come uh, and so um, Peter steps out of the water. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw. Now what's happening? There's a switch. The switch of the renewed mind went off. <laughs> the switch of the natural mind came on. Suddenly he's like, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm on water. And uh, there are winds. It's boisterous. Uh, how can I be walking on water? This is not logical. So he switched to the natural and now he started sinking. So sometimes it happens to ourselves, right? We start on a supernatural journey with God, like Abraham. God told me, I came, everything. In between, switch off, renewed off, and you know, natural. What am I doing? Where am I? Can I really do this? Why did I make this decision? We just come to that place. But the point is, we have to journey with a renewed mind all along. Then only the supernatural is possible. So what did Peter do? He switched to his natural mind. Obviously, natural mind will tell you it's not scientific. Peter, excuse me, Peter, it's not scientific to walk on the water. Don't you know? You know, you will sink uh, because you are a heavy object and you go into the uh, whatever, fluid, buoyancy, mm -hmm. principles of physics. But God, Jesus was gracious. He okay, thank God, even when we are in a place where our faith is shaking, um, you know, more than him shaking, his faith is shaking, so he's sinking at that moment. And Jesus gives out his hand, right? And he saves him. Jesus immediately stretched out his hand and caught him and said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Keep your mind, continue to walk with a renewed mind, continue to walk with faith. Then only you can make it happen, or then only you can see the miracle. Uh, when we are switching like this, it doesn't help. Okay, so that's the importance of a renewed mind, where a renewed mind is one which will help us exercise our faith in God. It will help us truly believe because we're looking at a supernatural God. With God, all things are possible. So renewed mind says, yes, I can expect. Yes, a miracle is possible. Yes, a healing is possible. Um, so a renewed mind will help us believe so from the natural whenever it is required we need to learn to function in the renewed mind okay? so make that a practice 
So what will the renewed mind do? The renewed mind will ask for a miracle. Even though naturally, logically, it's not possible, the renewed mind will say, why can't I pray for a miracle? You know, why can't I ask God to do this? That needs to be in us. Somewhere I think we miss that. You know, uh, so that's a key. That expectation that, um, okay, God can do a miracle. Let me ask for a miracle. So uh, that is important. That is the key now. The renewed mind will think of a possibility of the supernatural. Um, and, uh, you know, the word of God will help us operate in the supernatural. And, uh, yeah, to just develop this in our lives is what is useful. Um, so just going a little bit back to that passage we read from 1 Corinthians 2. Um, what is the renewed mind? You know, we'll try to understand that a little bit more. See, the renewed mind comes from the word of God. But in this passage we saw in verse 11, it says, the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. And the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, he is able to convey or uh, let us know what God is thinking. So in that case, uh, what we must do is, obviously the natural mind cannot accept that. But our renewed mind can know the heart of God. And when our renewed mind can accept the heart of God regarding that matter, we will be able to move in the supernatural so regarding all matters we can ask god what are you thinking okay what are you thinking what are you saying about the solution to this problem what are you saying about my destiny what are you saying about my ministry you know what are you saying about my health so when we start to ask questions like that our thoughts led by the holy spirit will grasp what god has in his heart and then we start to agree with that. And then we start seeing the miracle. Okay. So um, I think I've shared the gist of what I wanted to say. But any comments from your side regarding the renewed mind? Or... It's, it's something we must also um, really put into practice every time to say, God, what are you saying? Because... We may feel limited. We look at a situation and we say, it's not, it can't happen. So when we are led by the Spirit, I'm sure we will um, be able to trust God, believe God, because it's coming from the heart of God, right? The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. And the Holy Spirit is revealing to us, this is what God wants. This is what you see. So sometimes we say, you, know, you pray, what is the picture that you're seeing? What is the vision God is giving you? Uh, what is all that? It's all from the heart of God, prophecy. It's from the heart of God. So when we know what is there in God's heart, it makes it easier, easier for us to believe that uh, that's what God wants. And so you know, let's pursue it. Okay. So um, yeah, always maintain a renewed mind. So if there are no questions, then we can close with prayer today. We can take up questions in the next class too. So you can think some more about this subject and uh, come back. Okay? All right. So sure, let's uh, pray and let's close then. Uh, but I would request somebody from the class to pray. So yeah, please lead us. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord Father, for this time of learning, Lord Father. We thank you for 
teaching us a lot further about the new things a lot further. Jesus right now a lot further. As we have learned a lot further, Jesus, uh, we ask you Holy Spirit uh, to uh, help us a lot further to live and uh, to walk in the renewed mind a lot further, the, in the mind a lot further that is uh, in uh, alignment with your word and with the truth of who you are, Jesus. Lord Father, help us, Lord Father, not to be weary in our faith, but help us, Lord Father, to stand firm, Lord Father, in uh, in who you are in our lives, in, in the faith, Lord Father, of who you are. And Jesus, we pray, Lord Father, that everything that we have learned, Lord Father, Jesus, help us, Lord Father, not to forget, but help us, Lord Father, to take it, Lord Father, to meditate on it and to live by it, Jesus. So we just give you all the glory and honor for everything, Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, Prince. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for connecting to this class. God bless you and have a good week. Okay.